w a s d i k a Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So today I'm making a Thai dessert called Luk Chup, which are basically tiny little edible fruit sculptures made from beans. So the concept is sort of like marzipan fruits for those of you familiar with that. Except these actually taste good. So I used to make these with my mom a lot when I was a kid, and it's a really great activity because it's sort of like kids playing with Play-Doh, except when they eat it. You don't have to worry. Um, it's quite involved, so it's a great thing for you to do with other people. Because trust me, if you do it by yourself halfway through, you're gonna be like, forget it. I'll just spoon the bean paste and eat it straight up. But anyway, it's great. <laughs> I'm not selling this very well, <laughs> but it's really fun and rewarding to do it, and it, the the result is so cute that you're gonna be like, okay, that was worthwhile. All right, let's get started. So the bulk of this dessert is made from beans, mung beans in particular. And when you buy mung beans at the store, you want to make sure you get ones that are peeled and preferably split in half like this. So mung beans are green on the outside. You do not want the green ones. You want ones already peeled. Otherwise, your dessert will look very ugly. Um, if you can only find uh, Peeled but not split one, so like whole like this. That's okay to use too. It works totally fine. It just takes a little longer to cook because they are whole. So I've just got some water here, and I'm going to add my beans, my washed beans, and bring these to a boil. Eventually, we want to evaporate all of the water so that we get a paste. So do not top this with too much water. Like if it's getting dry, you can add a little more water. If the beans are not yet cooked, but don't just add gobs and gobs of water. Almost forgot, you don't have to add any flavorings in here. I think the coconut works just fine. But if you've got some pandan leaves lying around, you can add them at this stage as well. And I'm just going to once again tie this into a knot, give them a nice bruising. Hmm. And then let them boil together. So it's been about 20 minutes. My beans are basically cooked and mushy, as you can see. I'm gonna remove my pandan leaf. Thank you for your services. I don't have too much liquid left over, so that's good. But if you have even less, it'll save you even more time. So now uh, I'm going to add all the seasoning: some sugar, a little bit of salt, and then the coconut milk, which is going to add flavor and richness. So it's not just a dry bean paste. So this is really important, but not too much coconut milk because, hello. Oh, look at that! We ran out of gas. Just as well, we don't really need it for this moment. We'll get more later. But right now, I just need to stir this until everything is dissolved, and then I'm going to blend it until it's smooth. Whee! And you can use a regular jug blender, but I am using my stick blender just because it's easier. And you want this completely, completely smooth. <laughs> Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna switch walk to this. The reason because now I need to cook that down until it's like dough dry. So I want something that's as wide as possible so that it will evaporate as quickly as possible. Also, nonstick is a little better. It's easier to clean. The beans really come clean right off. This is where you are a slave to the stove for the next 20 to 30 minutes. Because you need to be stirring, because this is now a mash. If you don't stir, it will burn to the bottom. So you want the heat to be medium to medium low for this. Make sure you scrape the sides as you go. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes, so it doesn't take as long as I thought. But we're not done yet. I would want to show you that at this stage, a lot of people are going to be like, "Oh yeah, I could totally like once it cools down, I could totally make something with it." No. This is way too liquidy. It needs to be very thick, okay? But I just want to stop and show you. This is not it. If it still sticks to your spatula, you're not there yet, okay? So use a, a rubber silicone spatula for that. It's a really good gauge. So I want to show you what happens if your heat is too high. <laughs> you see this? You see this like brown bit? You do not want that happening, okay? I was a little. I lost a little bit of concentration. So what I'm gonna do. Is I'm gonna use another spatula to scrape it off my pan so it does not make it into my dough and discolor it. So this is why low heat all the way, and do not stop stirring. And this stove, unfortunately, does not do low heat very well. 
Okay, it's been 15 minutes. It's starting to let go of my spatula. Still sticking, but not sticking that much. And the problem with a dough that's too wet, it, it, like it will be fine, like it will shape up fine, but when you put it on the, the skewer or toothpick to paint and to dip them, they will slide down the toothpick. Once you've got this consistency, keep going a little bit further because you need it to be drier than you think. And the resulting dough should almost start to crack around the edges when you press on it. You see how right now, like if I press on it, it it's not smooth around the edges. It's cracking a little bit. That's a good sign. I am pretty happy with that. So I'm going to turn that off and then I'm going to put it in a bowl to allow it to cool. Bloop. Oh, look at that. So this is a dough that I made yesterday just because I didn't want to wait for the other one to cool, which is just sitting over there. Keep it wrapped when it's cooling. Okay. So now we're going to make little fruits for the sake of consistency. I'm going to make each one about seven to eight grams when it comes to, oh, seven grams. Oh no, six grams, a little bit more. When it comes to surface ratio to volume, no surface area to volume ratio, anything too big, then it'll just be a lot of beans and not a lot of the glaze on the outside. So I think seven to eight grams is good or less, but I wouldn't suggest more. So right now just form rough balls. Oh, by the way, a very, very, very important point. From this point onward, everything that touches this thing needs to be absolutely clean. So wash your hands and don't touch your phone while you're doing this because this is it guys. We are not cooking this anymore. So whatever's on your hand is going in here. La. All right, let's turn them into fruits or anything, cars, whatever you want. Caveat, I am not an expert at this. I am not a good sculpturist. If you want to know what a good sculpturist is like, check out my brother's YouTube channel. He's a real sculpturist. Um, so I can only make but a few of these. So let's say we wanted to make an orange. We just did. Um, you can use a small skewer and use the dull side and then rest it on a piece of styrofoam. Or uh, if you don't have styrofoam from Amazon delivery, you can also use a cucumber cut in half and anything you can pluck these things into. Okay, let's say I wanted to make a mango. I start out with a circle and then I kind of, it's really hard to show, but I kind of taper the end a little bit in between my hands like this to create that shape. Taper the end and try to bend it a little. I don't know. I'm not good at this stuff. Like I find this so <laughs> challenging. After the mango, I'm going to show you how to make a chili. Start out with a circle and then I'm going to just roll it on the cutting board and try to get it into a chili shape. Chilies are hard. They're so hard to make. And then finally, I'm going to show you how to make a mango steam. Start off with a ball as usual, and then you cut off a tiny little bit off the top like this. And then you remake this other piece a circle. And then with this top piece, you're going to cut into four tiny, tiny pieces, roll them into tiny balls, and then put it on top of the mango steam. Okay. There's a mango steam. How cute is that? Okay, so I'm going to go and make a few more of the rest of these and we'll be right back. Okay, food coloring. Um, how much you need to dilute your food coloring is going to entirely depend on the kind that you're using. Um, so this is something you're going to have to experiment with what you have, but you want the color to be quite vibrant. So let's do oranges first because that's easy. Roll it into the color and then what you want to do is maybe have a piece of paper towel that you can dab excess color, put this back onto the styrofoam and then repeat. Okay. So those are the oranges. Next, uh, let's do something simple like mango. Yeah, that's a nice mango, but it's too orange. It's not bad though. Well, that's a delicious looking mango. Let's try with this one. So that's a yellow, yellow mango. How did I get a dent in this mango? 
What do you think? Yellow? Yeah, let's go with the yellow one. Okay, next the chilies. Yeah, okay, that's good. Ding. Done. The mango steen. The top's got to be green and the bottom's got to be purple. You want to paint the light color first. The purple, which I find to be the hardest one to get right, amount of purple. I find it a little bit terrifying when it's so dark. Okay, look at that. How cute. And this will all look much better once they have a glaze on top. I forgot to show you one more thing. Uh, making a pumpkin or Chinese gooseberry in this case. So you start out with a circle as always. And then I'm gonna push it down a little. Boop, boop. And then I use a skewer or a toothpick to make ridges. Okay, so while these dry, I'm going to make the agar agar jelly glaze that's gonna go on the outside and protect them. Okay, for the agar agar, very simple. I got some water here. Oh, not yet. <laughs> I have to sprinkle some agar agar powder. And if you want to know what agar agar is, what it's all about, I do have a video all about it. I'll link to that below. So I'm going to turn this on. And ideally, you'd make more than this so that you have more depth to work with because you're going to need to dip these things in, right? So if it's too shallow to be challenging. But this is all the agar I have. So I have to make less. So I'm going to bring this to a full boil so it completely dissolves. You want to be stirring as well so the agar doesn't settle at the bottom. Frequently asked question, can you use gelatin instead? Absolutely not. Not for this. Gelatin does not solidify at room temperature. It just won't stick. It'll just dissolve down. So no, you need agar agar absolutely for this. So you want to see that the solution is clear. Then we're going to start dipping. You might want to wait for this to cool a little bit just, to, just because when it's super hot, the cooler it is, the thicker it is. So when it's super hot, the layer that you get will be quite thin. And so you have to do more layers. We're going to do this about three to five times. Um, but if it's a little bit cooler, then it's a thicker layer. But if it's too cool, then it will clump up on you. And so it, this is very finicky, right? It's got to be hot, but not too... And not, you know, and not too cold. So let's start with the oranges. You want to go one dip and then quickly up, straight away back onto your styrofoam. One flip and up. And you want to flip it up right away because you want the excess to drip downward so that it doesn't create a lump on the side of it. So this part is fun. I think kids love doing this part. And down. And then I think we did mango second. So I've got red food coloring contaminating my agar jelly. It's okay. I'm just going to know that I have, have to wait for these to dry a little bit more. In the meantime, I can do the second coat on these other ones. Oh. Now, if you're wondering why do we need to do three, five coats? Why can't we just coat it once and call it a day? It doesn't taste as good. Because what you'll find is the glaze doesn't just protect the thing, it also creates a texture that will provide like a little bit of a, a skin, but in a good way, like a kick on the outside before you go too soft on the inside. A glaze that's too thin, it's just not as satisfying and it just feels like it's a monotonous, mono-textural thing rather than something with lots of stuff going on. Okay. That's it. And with the rest of the agar agar, you can add sugar, add flavoring, dilute it with a little water just because this is quite hard, and then just eat it like a snack. All right, so now I'm going to take them off the skewers. This is final touches right here. As you can see, there's a little bit of a tail from dipping. So just use either a paring knife or scissors and cut that off. And then that will be the bottom. So it doesn't matter if there's a big hole. Bloop. If you don't have tiny scissors like I do, a paring knife will work. Just use a small sharp knife and boop, like that. And boop, and boop. The one lone pumpkin. <laughs> and that's it. No, that's not it. Just when you think this is done, we are going to decorate them 
with leaves. Yes, in Thailand, typically um, we use a particular plant with tiny little leaves. A lot of commercial vendors use plastic leaves. I just went outside. There's a hedge outside that has just the perfect kind of leaves. We're not going to eat this. I did check whether it's poisonous and it seems to be not poisonous. But again, this is decoration. You will remove it before you eat it. Bloop. Oh my God, look at that. Look how cute that is. See, once you put the leaf on, all of a sudden it looks so realistic. Oh my gosh, look how cute that is. Um, I could do a double leaf, yes. So cute. Oh, look how cute. It only took like four hours to make 16 pieces. <laughs> okay, time to eat. I'm gonna eat this off-colored mango because it doesn't work with the rest of my composition. Look at that. So cute. The leaf goes. I just wanna show you the inside. This brings back so many childhood memories. If you're a kind of person who likes sweet bean dessert, like, like if you like red bean buns, or you know at dim sum they've got bean filled various things. This is like that kind of thing. It's creamy, it's smooth, it's got the aroma of the coconut milk and that little bit of texture from the agar agar. I could have probably gone a couple of layers and that's something you can do. You can try one, see if you want another layer of the, of the glaze. But it's a lot of work. But if you have the right situation, it could be a fun activity to do with your family and they taste good at the end of the day. With a cup of hot black tea, mm, that, would be, that would be perfect right there because it's creamy and rich and some tea, perfect. So the recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com for those of you who want to challenge yourself and make something like this. I definitely want to see a photo of this. Like this is definitely something, if you make it, you tag me at Hot Thai Kitchen everywhere on Twitter, Instagram, or uh, post it and tag me on Facebook as well. I would love to see what kinds of things you make. I'm sure many of you are much more talented and can pull off something much better looking or much more complex than this. Thank you for our Patreon members who help support the show and I will see you next time for your next delicious time.